So can you tell me more about craving? Well, craving is the first personal opinion on the line of human cognition, where the I enters into this equation. This is where it happens at this point in human cognition. Right at craving, uh, the star of the show becomes me, <laughs> instead of I, as you say, me, all of a sudden. Our usual way of describing this is to say that craving is the I like it or the I don't like it mind. Immediately following this is the link of clinging, which then proceeds to explain why I like or I dislike what came up as the feeling. Now, how, how does this work? Each time you run a story in your mind about the ideas of why you like or dislike something, the tension and tightness increases more and more. This is where it starts to, it's, it's just here and then it's tension and then it's tension and then it's tension going like this. And then it kind of dips into bow and says, what shape should the tension be? And then it explodes, you know, from something in the past that you remember, you will react that way. So this moves us further along the line of cognition uh, from feeling into emotional states. And the emotional states lead us picking to picking a reaction, and then the reaction comes alive. In this is this where self comes in? Yes, Q, this is where your I, me, my, and mine comes in. It's where it begins. It's where it starts. This is where the ego first arises and gets bossy. Yes, I believe that's what is happening is me. We start to believe, I believe, but whatever is going on, it's me. And this is who I am. And this is myself. And the equivalent of taking things very personally like this jumps in the way of just seeing things clearly and what is actually going on. So you're working in an unessential assumption most of the time. You're not going through to what is actually happening. And there's one author that I like who calls it, you are ignoring the actuality. That's what he calls it. So this is where we mistakenly take the unessential as being the essential in a situation instead of only seeing the essential as the essential and responding properly. You see, it's what makes us react. Is this why craving is the root of suffering? Yes, if we step back and observe what is happening, seeing it as it really is, we can give ourselves the space to decide how to respond to a situation correctly. But if we are taking the situation personally, our minds are cloudy and we are likely to dive in and to react, okay? to whatever it is, based on the fact it feels very re-stimulating, just the same as something that once happened before to us in the past. That's what's happened if we, in, you know, uh, in a situation, as soon as it's over, <laughs> unfortunately, you can turn around and look back and they, they call it 2020 hindsight, looking back and seeing what actually happened. You know, I had a friend, um, in New York and he was having a, a really nice relationship and the girl getting close to proposing to this girl and the girl came home to the, came back to the apartment when, and opened up their front door and he was kissing another woman. <gasps> and she just slammed the door, got in the car and drove off. Guess who he was kissing? <laughs> Guess who? His sister, who came back from, you know, from the war, from in, in the military, and she came to visit him. And they were just hugging, and he was just hugging her and kissing her, you know, and oh, and this turned out to be his sister. And she felt that big. What happened to her? She saw it, right? Oh, painful, painful, painful feeling. I don't like this. Oh, how could he do this? Oh, look at all 
the stories in New York, she was in New York in probably in the heart of the drama between individuals in the world or something. You know, it's on TV, it's in the movies, it's everywhere on the street. You hear it from everybody. At, well, I just broke up, he's cheating, you know, or she's cheating or there's, oh my goodness. And there it was right in front of her, bang. And it had to be true. And it was true in that moment, it was definitely true. And look at what happened. It was his sister. So we don't want to re react based on um, the fact that it's very re-stimulating, just the same as something that happened in the past. We want to get to a point where we can actually live in the present time, right in this car. <laughs> live in this and stay in the present time and move forward. And we can have things happen and pass them and leave them behind. We don't have to put them in here with us. You know, we don't have to do that. So we can close the library and not go in there and get what we need to give birth to a reaction. We can pause to look at what's really might be happening maybe even ask a question <laughs> okay sounds like this could be the problem for people in relationships and interactions in life that's true but most people remain ignorant of how all of this works and they are never informed about how this actually operates doesn't happen in health class it's not in school and therefore they cannot see how letting go, relaxing, and impersonally observing what is going on could help them understand what is happening. But this is exactly what ignorance is about. The root word is ignore. What is being ignored, the impersonal process, is being unconsciously ignored. This is nobody's fault though, because no one ever told us about it. Your parents didn't know it either. You see, ignorance comes from unintentionally ignoring and not understanding how the Four Noble Truths work and this impersonal process that we've been discussing, which is how the human cognition operates in the being. And also most people, they haven't had the opportunity to listen to the three characteristics of existence be pointed out for them and what were those three characteristics again they were impermanence they're constant changing constant change all the time going on anicca impermanence suffering dukkha and mental suffering or physical suffering an impersonal nature of everything it's not personal it's all an experience that is an impersonal thing. Sometimes these are called the three marks of existence, another way to look at them in the training. I remember now, he says, suffering or unsatisfactoriness is caused greatly by my taking personally what is going on and the impermanent nature of everything increases the levels of tension and stress and even depression. That's right. You've got it. The craving is the trigger point that sets this off. The solution is to let go, relax, smile, and come back to what you're doing and keep going with a smile. Once the brain learns how much more comfortable this is, it is going to begin to do these steps automatically. So you have to keep this going until it does. Let whatever is arising just be there. Stay with your object of meditation or with your task and smile through it. Let go of all of the tension and tightness after emptying out precisely what the Buddha instructed and relaxing the mind and then come back to the object of meditation with a smile. Proceed onward with a lighter mind. Life will get a lot lighter. And if you do this for a few days, you can try it and see. Here's a post exercise we can use for this one. Time to experiment. Take some time this week and while living life and see if you can notice when something annoys you. See how there is an increase to tightness in the head and the body. 
If this is a distraction for you, then just never mind it and smile and keep going. Forgive yourself and forgive the distraction quickly. Let it go, relax, smile, and come back to what you are doing. See if you can notice the difference when you let it go and smile and report back. Let us know how it works. So this is how we got through this one originally. And this one is set up to go into clinging. But now we're probably going to look at something. And let's see what time it is. It's 3.30. Okay. This took a little longer. If you get out your chart on the seven links of, uh, of dependent origination, I want to go in and get you a chart here. I can put one up. Let me see. I'm pretty sure I can do this for you. Okay, let's see. Okay, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can find this. I'm going to probably have to go to the other one. All right, it's okay. I have to go to the other one. I have to go remember where I am. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -bum -bum. Let's see, I'm going to go back again. Hold on. That's right. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back. I went back too far. That's okay. You can do it. I know you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to find where I probably went to. Okay, current. Here we go. Here we go. Go in here into the whole list and find the one I need. Okay. Um, DO7 turn chart. There you go. That was easier than I thought. Hmm. Okay, I have to push you over just a little bit here. Wait a minute. There you go. So when I give you the training chart, I give you from contact. Basically, everybody, they realize what the six sense doors are and they realize uh, you, they need to know if they don't know. You can always tell them our Nama Rupa is very simple. When we look at Nama Rupa and we're talking about the chart, we're talking about the six sense doors and we're saying the earth element of the ear, the actual ear versus the, uh, the that's the Rupa and the Nama is the mental process of being able to hear through the ear. That's all we're using this for. So your contact happens moves to feeling and when feeling arises where craving comes. So this is the one thing we're probably gonna change on the chart eventually is here is the birth right here. We're gonna put something to the effect of here is the birth of I. <laughs> in, in memory, in, in tribute to uh, the way that Dr. Poonaji was doing this, he was really, this I is suddenly born. It's not there before this. These. These other links back here and before are impersonal links. And if, if you don't believe that it's impersonal, you ask yourself, do I personally make my eye see? Do I personally make my ear hear? Or my nose sense odor? My tongue sense flavor? Do I personally make that operate? And you don't. If you think you do, I'll give you my phone number. And you know, when you wake up in the morning, you can call me and tell me what you told your eyes to see when they opened up and they saw it. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You just open your eyes and you that's then the visual thing occurs. I don't wanna go into the optical operations of everything. I think it's unnecessary. It's another course like, you know, for each one of the sensors, but all we're trying to get you to see is I'm not there. 
And that's those. And then the contact operates uh, next and the feeling operates and comes up. And then what happens, these third one is actually neutral, but I was telling somebody last night, maybe if a couple of advanced students sit down for three hours, we could talk about what neither pleasant nor painful feeling is. <laughs> but actually, all you need to know is it's it's pleasant, it's painful, or it's neutral in most of the suttas. It's always in that order, pleasant, painful, or neutral. That's why we try, we try when we're talking to you not to change the order of the sense doors, like from eyes, uh, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. We tell you not to change the order when you talk about the three marks or characteristics of existence, because why? Well, because with the three marks, there's a causal relationship involved. You don't want to change it. You want to be able to go to the suttas and read it the way it was written and, and understand it clearly, okay? And so what's happening here when you get to craving, that's the I like it or the I don't like it mind. And we know I like it moves towards attachment. And the I don't like it moves towards uh, revulsion or repelling something away and it's like two sides of a coin okay but the funny part is that when you have a painful feeling and you don't like it and you want you end up instead of instead of saying that's the aversion I have aversion to it but then you end up um, wanting desiring and getting attached to the idea of making it stop and that's all wrong. The hindrance has trapped you, or you, if you don't just let it go and watch what it is and, and learn from how it works. If you get involved with it personally, then you're not meditating anymore. Always remember another way to remember, why shouldn't I get involved with it? Why shouldn't I move over there and spend time with what comes up in my mind? If you want another way to think about that, Okay, you always remember uh, number 22 where the Buddha said, I said, do not engage. The Buddha said, whenever an obstacle comes up, it will not become an obstruction unless you engage in it. So the Buddha was saying, do not engage a hindrance. Just like we would say to the cavalry, hold, hold, do not advance. <laughs> we would say that. You know, do not engage uh, the, the hindrance. There's, just abandon it and keep going. If you did, what, what does it mean if you do decide to go over and sit with it until it goes away? That's what I like to ask people. You tell me, are you with your object of meditation? If you are in meditation and you've decided to go over there, and stay there till that goes away. Are you still here with the spiritual friend or observing, just observing what's happening? The answer is no, you're not. And so what is what has happened is you have formed this observation that is described by the Buddha for your practice to go to the point of cessation and experience Nibbana. And then when something comes up, you have decided to go over here and investigate and dissect what's happening with the hindrance. This is two separate practices. Don't do that, you know, because if I ask you to sit for two hours or three hours, if you're up to that level and I ask you to do that, you can't come back and say, yeah, well, <laughs> I, I was there for three hours. But what happened when something came up? Well, before I let it go, I wanted to see what it was. And so I went to see what it was. See, that doesn't work. So this is your, your um, showing you that these emotions at the bottom of the chart, they don't happen until the, about like when you first, you pronounce I. And then those emotions come up. And these emotions down here that are coming up, these disturbing emotions are not the same as these feelings. They are not the same. Feelings just feeling. We can wire you up, sensitivity of the skin, sensitivity of other systems and know when you feel something. And from practice, we can tell whether it's a 
uh, you know, a good or, a, 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 you know, a pleasant or unpleasant feeling. Yeah. But the emotions are different. Emotions of structure, emotions, uh, they have names. So you can tell me what all the emotions are, anger and happy, happiness and, um, you know, uh, what's the one where you panic attacks, these things, these all are kinds of emotional states and depressions of all different levels. They are the emotional states. But the feeling in, is something else. And that's why we separated here because those emotions involve me and opinion and how I feel about them, okay? 